So you want to run Windows and Linux? Well, you could dual boot Windows and Linux, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot Linux Mint and Windows 11. Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. Recently, I reviewed the latest version of Linux Mint. I thought it was pretty cool and I had a lot of fun with it. But then I realized it's been quite some time since I've done a Linux Mint and Windows dual boot video, so here we are. And that's the project that we're going to be working on today. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to dual boot Windows 11 and Linux Mint. And by the end of this video, you will have a dual boot that's set up and ready to go. Now, I'm going to assume that you've already backed up your computer. I don't expect that you're going to run into any problems when it comes to dual booting these two platforms, but you never know. Sometimes chaos theory comes into play and you might lose some data, so I recommend that you back up your hard drive and you also have a means of reinstalling Windows if you need to do that. Again, I don't have any reason to believe that you're going to run into any problems, but you never know. Again, computing and chaos theory. Now, one last thing before we get started. I need to take a moment and mention the sponsor for today's video. And that sponsor is Sendio, the makers of ThinLink. ThinLink is a remote desktop solution that enables you to access a Linux desktop from anywhere. ThinLink can be used in a setup for one or a few users, but it can also support thousands of users in enterprise environments, providing remote access to high demanding OpenGL applications running on a centralized server. ThinLink is easy to set up and the performance is great. In fact, ThinLink includes admin tools for system administrators to make managing this product even easier. Part of what makes ThinLink awesome is that it combines the best open source components out there to provide a pure Linux experience. But it's not just about Linux. Clients are available for Windows and macOS as well. So even if you don't use Linux as your daily driver, you can still use a Linux desktop anytime you want. And ThinLink is developed by Sendio in Sweden, one of the oldest Linux-centric companies in the world. And these guys know what they're doing as it's developed by the same team behind Tiger VNC and No VNC. So check out ThinLink. It's my favorite remote desktop solution, and if you visit the URL that you see on the screen, then you'll let them know that you heard about them from Learn Linux TV. But not only that, you can test it out for yourself and see why it's awesome. You can set it up on a virtual machine, a cloud instance, or perhaps your own computer and a full version is available for up to 10 concurrent users for free. So check out ThinLink. All right, with that out of the way, it's time to get started. So let's dive in and set up a dual boot between Linux Mint and Windows 11. The first thing that we're going to need is to create Linux Mint installation media. To do that, you could go to the URL that you see on the screen right now, and that'll take you to the download page for Linux Mint. Once there, you'll download the ISO image for the latest release, and then from there, you'll use that to create the installation media. Once you have it downloaded, the next step is to download something like USB Imager, and with USB Imager, you could take an ISO image, like the one that we've just downloaded, and use that to write the entire ISO image to the flash drive, thereby making it installation media. Once you have the installation media created, the next thing you'll do is boot your computer with that installation media. The process varies from computer to computer. It could be F12, that's a very likely button that'll activate the boot menu on your computer, but you can always consult the documentation for your computer if you want to be sure which button you should press at startup to activate the boot selection mode. Once you do, you should see the flash drive there as a boot option, and then we'll boot into Linux Mint and we'll boot into live mode. If you didn't already know, live mode allows us to demo the distribution before we install it. Essentially, it runs the distribution off the flash drive. Now in this mode, it might run a little slower than it would run if you installed it on real hardware, but it does give you a chance to test the release with your hardware before you install it. So we should make sure that things like Wi-Fi, web browsing, audio, dual displays, maybe printers, or whatever else you have that you want to work, we should make sure that all of that works before we go to install it. Once you've had some time to play around with live mode, we can go ahead and start the process. And here we have my Windows 11 desktop. I've just inserted my Linux Mint installation media. I should be ready to go. What I'll do is restart it right now and I'll reboot into the installation media for Linux Mint. And here we are. We see the Linux Mint desktop, just like I mentioned earlier, this is live mode, so feel free to test out Linux Mint on your hardware 
But if you're ready to go, then I'm ready to go, so let's do it. Right here on the desktop, we have an Install Linux Mint icon, so I'll double click on that. And that brings up the installer. The first screen here will let us choose an alternative language for the installer if we want to do that. I'm going to leave mine on the default, and I'll click Continue. The next screen will allow us to choose our keyboard layout. We could also leave this at the default if we'd like to do that. But go ahead and choose a different keyboard layout if you do have a different keyboard. You could go ahead and test your keyboard by typing into this box. And once you know that your keyboard is working, we can click Continue. Next, it's asking us if we want to install multimedia codecs. Now the thing is, I recommend that everybody check this box right here. Quite a few different media formats are supported out of the box here. A few aren't that you might run into. So I see no reason not to check this box, just in case you do run into something later that needs a codec in order to play, you could avoid any headache and have this set up ahead of time. Anyway, let's continue. Now you might see this screen right here that's asking if you'd like to unmount partitions that are in use. The reason why this comes up is because anytime you boot Linux Mint, it's going to at least try to mount any hard drives that you have attached to the computer, and that may include hard drives that you want to install Linux Mint onto. So what this is going to do, if we choose yes, is make sure that no partition is in use by anything else, so that way the installer has full access. There's no reason to say no here, so I'll click yes. And next, we've come to a very important screen. We get to choose our installation type. Now the thing is, you don't want to choose this option right here, Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint. If you do, it will do exactly as it says. It'll erase your disk and install Linux Mint, meaning it's going to wipe out Windows completely, so that's not what we want when it comes to this tutorial. So what we want to do is make sure that we choose Install Linux Mint alongside Windows Boot Manager, which is going to trigger the installer to give us a chance to set up a dual boot. Now we could choose something else and do an advanced installation, but I'm going to keep it simple in this video. We're going to leave it at this option here, and we'll click Continue. Now, this is another important screen. What we want to do is choose the hard drive we want to install Linux Mint onto. If you have more than one, if you do want to set up Linux Mint on its own hard drive, you could choose that hard drive up here in the dropdown, but in my case, I only have this one hard drive anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The next thing you're going to do is decide how much space you want to give Windows and how much space you want to give Linux Mint. Now by default, it's going to split the hard drive in half, more or less. It's not going to be exact, but close enough. Now this side of the rectangle here corresponds to Windows, while the right-hand side corresponds to Linux Mint. Now what we could do here is move the mouse cursor here to the dividing line, and we could drag it left or right to choose how much space we want to give Windows and how much space we want to give Linux Mint. To decide how much space to give one or the other, just think about how much you plan on saving. If you plan on installing a lot of applications and saving a lot of files, you'll want to give one more than the other. You definitely want to make sure that you leave room for growth, so don't crank this all the way to the left and give Windows barely anything. You need to make sure that Windows has some room to grow, because it will grow over time, but you also want enough space for Linux Mint as well. So I'll leave this up to you. Whenever we've dragged this line to the appropriate place, we could click Install Now to get the installation started, which does mean we're going to wipe out the hard drive, so pretty soon we're going to pass the point of no return. I'll click Install Now. I'll click Continue. It's going to give us a little warning here, and if I click Continue, then we are at the point of no return. So I'll click Continue. Let's do it. So it's installing in the background, but we have a few more things that we could choose here to set up. The first is going to ask us to set up our location. And what that's going to do is make sure that the clock is set appropriately, that our language is set appropriately, our locale settings basically. So what you'll want to do is get this red dot as close as you can to your location. It doesn't have to be exact, but it does have to be in the vicinity of the time zone that you reside in. In my case, right here, it says 627 which is wrong. It's not 627, it's 127. So by choosing the time zone, that should also correct the time as well. Anyway, I click continue. And we can see immediately that the time did correct itself right here. And this is correct. You'll have to take my word for it, but it is currently 127 p.m. as of recording time. 
Here, what we're going to do is set up our user information. So we'll type in our name up here at the top. This is for the primary user account. I'll simplify my computer name down to just ThinkPad. I think that's good enough. Now it's telling me there's already a computer with this name on the network. That's only because I am reinstalling the operating system on this computer. And my firewall still has a DHCP lease for this computer, which is how it knows that this name is already on the network. But only this one machine is going to be called this, so it doesn't really matter in my case. If you're curious, the computer name is the name that you'll see if you browse the network to share files or something like that. So whatever you name your machine is how it's going to show up for other people. It may not matter for some of you, but I just wanted to point that out. Anyway, we'll set up a strong password here. And we should be good to go. Now, you can encrypt your home folder if you want to. Now, whether or not you do that is up to you. I'm not going to do that on my end. If you do check this box, that means your home folder, the folder where all of your files are going to be stored, will be completely unreadable until you log into Linux. So if that's something that you want to set up, then go ahead. You could also choose to log in automatically if you want that. I don't really recommend that. We definitely want to be prompted for a password so we don't get unauthorized access. So I'll leave mine on the middle option here to require a password, and then I'll click Continue. What I'll do is let this finish, and then I'll be right back. And there we go. It looks like installation of Linux Mint is all set. All right, everyone, moment of truth. What I'm going to do right now is reboot the computer. First, I'll boot it into Windows, and then I'll boot it into Linux Mint. I want to make sure that both operating systems are fully functional before I call this project a success. So let's reboot and see how it turned out. And here we go. Here's what the boot selection screen looks like. And this is the screen that you should see if everything was successful. Now the very first option is going to be the one that's chosen by default. So if I was to let this boot without changing anything or making a different selection, then Linux Mint is what I would get. But what I wanna do instead is just boot into Windows 11. We'll make sure that works. So I'll press enter. And take a look at that. Here we have the Windows login screen. That's a good sign. And there we go, Windows works just fine. Now if you're curious, what I'm gonna do is just open Windows Explorer here. Let's go to this PC, and we can right click on the hard drive, go to Properties. We can see that I have plenty of space when it comes to Windows, the Windows side of the hard drive, if you will. But anyway, it looks like everything was successful, at least in terms of Windows. So what I'll do, is reboot yet again, and this time I'm not going to choose anything. I'm going to let it boot into Linux Mint. Let's see if that works. And check this out. We have a successful Linux Mint installation on the same hard drive as Windows 11. So you know what? If I didn't know any better, I would say that our project to dual boot Linux Mint and Windows 11 was a complete success. And there we go. In this video, we set up a brand new dual boot between Linux and Windows, and I hope you enjoy it. If you did find this video useful, then please click that like button to let YouTube know how helpful this video was to you. Also, consider sharing this video on your favorite social media platform. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, with this video out of the way, I have a bunch more videos coming that I'm editing right now that I can't wait for you guys to see. So be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.